Bring you more on education as we celebrate World Day of Education. But this afternoon, Join News is learning that there is a change in minority leadership in Parliament. We are hearing that Atto Force, a former ranking member on the uh, finance, is now minority leader. Co Parliamentary correspondent Kweku Asante joins us with more. Kweku, what has led to this critical change this afternoon? So Aisha, it is not clear what exactly might have prompted the NDC leadership to cause this major shift of change in the NDC front bench in parliament. But it has been coming over the past few weeks. We've, we've had talks of the NDC leadership having some conversation about changing the front bench of the party. Indeed, Muntaka Mubarak, the chief whip, had actually denied that. He had spoken to our colleagues in Kumasi. He had said that there was no such discussion going on. But just this morning and just this afternoon, the news coming in is that the entire front bench of the minority has witnessed some seismic changes. The minority leader, Harun Idris, who only yesterday was on PM Express, in that capacity, is no more the minority leader. His deputy, and then the minority chief whip, um, minority chief whip, Muntaka Mubarak, has also been changed. But the first deputy whip, Ahmed Ibrahim, has been maintained. The second whip, Doyo Gansa, has been maintained. As of now, Kesel Atofosin, who, like you said, is the outgoing ranking member on the finance committee, is said to become the minority leader. The deputy is said to become Amma Kofibua, who was a former energy minister under John Dramani Mahama. And the chief whip is expected to be um, governs Kwame Agoja. And so when Parliament resumes next week or two, these changes will take effect. And you were asking specifically what might have caused this. Indeed, there was some chatter in Parliament that the back bench of the party did not trust so much the front bench. There were some underhand dealings that they claimed were going on. Of course, no one has provided any evidence to that. And their statement put out by General Secretary Fifi Fiavikwete did not specifically state the reasons but these are some of the issues that have come up, matters of distrust, issues of the party giving specific instructions to the party, which they did not comply with in parliament, have culminated in this decision to remove Harun Idrisu, James Kluchi Abeji, and Moon Takamubara, who were the three leading members of the NDC in parliament from the front bench. Hmm. Interesting uh, <laughs> details there from Kwekwa Sante, but um, Evan Smith, at his head of political desk at here, here at Joy News, he's joined me in the studio. Um, Evans, obviously, this team that has been changed has uh, performed um, marvelously, if you ask me. And uh, of course, especially when the House became almost equal, almost a hung parliament, what does this mean for... Um, the minority in parliament. I mean, as we speak, we're, we're still learning a bit more and my, my phone has just been uh, ringing, trying to work our sources and get a bit more understanding of what is happening. Um, just before I, I, got, I got in here, I've been speaking to a very, very senior source in, in parliament on the, on the minority side and they've given me a bit of clarity that apparently the, this, what is now transpiring has been something that has been simmering shortly after the national elections the you know, to, elect, to elect the chairman, the general secretary, and the others. Right. And, it, and the, the belief there is that it's only happening because, and they point a finger at John Sassoud and Ketia, who is a national chairman. Right now. Because he was not supported by the outgoing crop of leaders on the minority side. But we heard from parliaments, from Ahmed Ibrahim, who said almost over 150... And, and, and I'm happy that you mentioned him. that. In yes. fact, that was... Is, is always, in this conversation I was having with the source, it is an incident that sort of then got Asir and Ketia to decide that this is possibly what must happen if he wins. Because remember that in that conversation... Mm. And then, by the way, let's put it in context. The name you mentioned is one of the few individuals who, who have, have been, been maintained, maintained right, right? Yes, in as the deputy chief of leaders. Whip. He still maintains his position as deputy chief. Mm -hmm. But in that occasion, he goes to Asir and Ketia's launch of his campaign and then pledges the entire support of the minority mm -hmm. to Asir and Ketia's yeah. cause. Yep. Strictly thereafter, Hayam Nadrisu goes, issues a statement, mm -hmm. distancing the minority side from that particular pronouncement and categorically stating that it's, it's not true that the minority side supports Asir and Ketia. 
And that was the first public manifestation that there may be a division in terms of the allegiances going into the, mm. into the campaign for the national executive positions. Okay. And it is, if one of the individuals I spoke to called what has happened a coup d'etat. Mm. He says what has happened is a coup d'etat and that procedurally, the person is going to challenge the, what has happened. Because the explanation that I was giving is, and, and remember, this is breaking. So yeah. a lot of people, everybody is trying to get information. The explanation yeah. I got is, in, in, in these circumstances, you do it with the consent of the minority caucus. So the, very, the regional caucuses Definitely. will put names in the envelope, sealed envelope, and okay. it's submitted. And that's how Haruna's team were, was elected. Okay, but and it does look like this hasn't gone through that happen. process. Fact, according to the source, this didn't happen. And then you also don't do it when the parliament is on recess. Mm. Because, of course, you don't have everybody else you know, to, to consult yep. them. Yep. And, and most importantly... The individuals who have been removed didn't know that they're going to be removed. <laughs> In fact, they, they are hearing it as I, when I made a call. Okay. They are hearing it from me that this has happened. They've not been giving letters. They've not. No, been they've not been told to that things are happening. Party. So, and in fact, it's a reason why Muntaka Mubarak last week gave that interview and said categorically, um, it's not true mm. because he didn't know. But apparently, this has been cooking for a while. Okay. It's just manifesting itself right now. So clearly from what has happened, we are going to see a situation once this is confirmed. And again, I was told that that group of, you know, the leaders who have been removed currently mm. are advising themselves to, to be quiet until this is confirmed. Okay. We're possibly going to see a challenge. But, but, but let's look at the names that are coming up. Ato Forsen as minority leader. Amako Feboa as his deputy. Chief Whip governs Agboja. Yeah. What do you think? I mean... Uh, um, Dr. K is also forcing Amase as the spokesperson for the minority on, on, on finance and the ranking has been excellent mm. in terms of the way he's led that his, 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 his bit of, of the, of the leadership ranking group. member of you know, He's been okay. excellent. He's put a lot of pressure mm. on, on the on government. The he's, he's, he's constantly out there taking on the government, of course. And if you look at the vote of censure. Yep. He was the leader of that. Mm. I mean, I don't know, of course, because he was leader, was sitting with him. But mm. in terms of the work that was done, so I have no doubt he can do the job. Mm. The only question becomes the way this has happened. And as mm. I've said, I have been told in authority from a senior leader that this is a coup d'etat. Mm. So if you have people in the party in that position with a huge constituency calling this a coup d'etat, yeah. then you can eventually begin, immediately begin to see what will happen if Atu Force is confirmed. Okay. Because you remember, those crop of leaders also have their supporters okay. right, in, in parliament. So this is going to be very interesting. It, and it, it's going, going to be forward. very interesting. And I'm told that there's an official uh, letter to this effect. So we'll be sharing that with you uh, on what the NDC is saying with this change. But I'm more interested also in the personality. So you have it there. Um, and just as you can see on your screens, it's a letter to the Honorable Speaker Alban Bagby. It says, notice of changes in the leadership of the NDC party in parliament. National leadership of NDC wishes to formally bring to your notice the following changes the party has undertaken. Minority leader, Dr. Kesia Lato Force and Deputy Minority Leader Kofi Amabua, Minority Whip Kwame Agboja, First Deputy Whip Ahmed Ibrahim, Second Deputy Whip Comfort Doyo Ganza. The new leadership will be charged to recommend consequential changes in the ranking membership to uh, headquarters of the party for approval. And let's see who signed this letter. It's a Fifi Kwete, who is General Secretary. Let's look at Chief Whip uh, Evans, and we know how. Muntaka has um, held that position um, religiously, and we know how he's been able to whip the party in all instances. Yeah, I and mean, yesterday on PM Express, Aisha, there was a part of the interview where Haruna almost pauses, and this appears to go on a tangent, mm. talking about the criticism that he and the side gets in the house all the time for not doing much, and mm. then he mounts a very vehement defense of his leadership. Yep. And then he says, for those who criticize me, if I haven't done anything at all, I ensured that we elected a leader. Mm -hmm. And that is such a big historical achievement because yep. in the country, in Ghana, we haven't We've seen, never that before, seen that before. Where we have a party in opposition with a speaker, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. But he says, he points to that, that that's one of the things. And if you're talking about mentioning Muntaka Mubarak, yep. I remember that fateful 
um, 7th, 6th to 7th January, yeah. when we spend the night in Parliament, mm. the, the role that Montaka Mubarak played mm -hmm. in ensuring that Alban Babing is elected as yeah. Speaker yeah. Was, was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I, I got to learn later in many, many interviews with him. Yeah. And he goes into explaining in detail on PM Express how he did it, trying to consult the MPP side, see who is aggrieved, yep. right? And, and, so join and them. to join them and making them, you know, promises in, in exchange for their support. Yep. And they got somebody to vote for them. Mm -hmm. That is the only reason why Aban Bagwing has was elected. But so remember that post that, his relationship with Aban Bagwing mm. hasn't been perfect. Yeah. I mean, they've had cause to vehement disagree on the floor. Yes. They had, they, they had, and I've asked him before, in the last interview I did with him, if you remember, yeah. He went all guns blazing mm. at, you know, the Speaker of Parliament, yeah. calling him a tyrant, if yeah. you remember, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And remember that the Speaker is an NBC stalwart, a yeah. founding member of the party. Yeah, he is. Who is the letter addressed to? It is to him. The Speaker. I mean, you cannot help but reading between the lines here, yeah. that there's a lot at play. And remember mm. that Asirun Kitia is a member of the parliamentary service. Yes, he right? is, yeah. And there's a lot of people who say he got that position because Abambabin wanted him there. To be there. Right? So you have this triangle of Abambabin, loyal to Asir and Ketia, mm. and then you have at the other side of it, Haruna and, and, um, uh, and uh, Montaka Mubarak, who mm. appear to be in conflict with the two with I've the mentioned. Two up there. Then you have a perfect storm brewing, and yeah. no wonder this has been called the but, but let's put the party um, at the middle of uh, this whole conversation. And of course, we know 2024 is just around the corner. These personalities we've mentioned, Agboja, I know he's a firebrand. Does he have that, that fire? to be able to hold that position that Muntaka held. Oh, wow. Remember when we had uh, the, uh, I mean, we've had a lot of instances where uh, Muntaka have had, has, he's had to even lift the ballot box and, and all that yeah, remember has, the fight. has been yeah, there. Yeah, remember the fight. The, the, does, Agboja yeah. have, does he have that strength I, I to, to take up that I position? Agboja does. I mean, and that's the thing about the minority, the, the crop of individuals. And one of the names that I possibly expected will be, will be part of this, who possibly would have been, um, uh, uh, okay. right? I mean, mm. but of course, he's not there. But yeah. Agboja, from everything we've seen, and when you see him argue on the floor, he's very, very passionate. Okay. Um, and I was privileged in 2016 to be in his constituency yep. and hosting a ballot box program right in the midst of, 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 his, of his village there. And you could see the passion and, and the respect he commands from his followers. So I have no doubt that he can play the role. Mm. I mean, if... If the process I've been told is how these were elected, as in, if they got the other um, members of the minority side mm. to put forward names, okay. then he presumes that you have the support of some you know, significant number of his own NDC colleagues. Mm. But as I've been told, they, they, they are questioning whether that process was followed. Okay. So I don't know how much authority and legitimacy he will carry if indeed it was a party selection okay. and if he didn't come from his own ranks i don't know that but in, i don't question his competence at all okay. and his ability to i mean what, what are you there to do to whip your parties your members in line mm. to oppose government policies yep. and programs in parliament you mm. believe is inimical mm. to your constituent that's primarily is going to is going to be what he's going to do and to do that you must you must earn the respect of your colleagues yep Question is, does he earn that respect yeah. when, as the mm. minority spokesperson of transport, yeah. which is what he is mm. currently, mm. has he earned that respect? Look, I don't know. But if you isolate him as an individual and look at his qualities, he has the qualities mm. um, to sort of move that. He has what it takes. And, and I want to come back to the minority uh, leadership. You want to just oppose Ato Fosin and Amako Fibua uh, versus Oseche Mensabonso and uh, Afenyo Markings. You know... Haruna has some radicalism, and sometimes you need that for the work that he does. Mm. These two people, even though they do their work, I mean, Ato Forsen has been a firebrand. If you talk about um, his finance committee, he's been spokesperson for the minority, he's been very loud over there. But I doubt if he has that radicalism. I see him to be a calm person. And same with Amako Fibwa. If you have two these two, these two calm people facing 
somebody like Jose Chairman Sabonso and his deputy Afenyo Markings, how is it going to be like? I mean, so, so you, you, the, you, you have to take both positions and see how they complement each other. So you have um, uh, uh, Amako Fibwa, who, who is a firebrand, by the way. I yes, remember, well, I mean, definitely. When longest serving energy minister we've had, you know, maneuvered and survived. Um, he, Mills and John Mahama kept his position. And anybody you speak to tell you that he, he is a force to be reckoned with in the party. Right, and he has a lot of resources at play too that he can he can bring to bear, um, and and it's not it's interesting that he is the the man who is who is going to deputise uh, Atu Forcing, but I guess Atu Forcing has been chosen on merit also because of the work I said that he's, he's done, done yeah. but also because of where the country is currently. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. In the next in the next two years, mm. the defining factor will be the the economy. Yep. Right. The defining factor. Definitely. Um. Yesterday with Harold Adrisu. 80% 80, 80 of the conversation was around the economy, right? And he held his own sure. perfectly. Yep. Re, ra, ra, he held his own perfectly. Mm. I mean, but the party made me is thinking, you need somebody with a finance bank. And he's now, he's now holding a doctorate degree. He's been a deputy finance minister before. Mm. I don't know what the considerations were, but sitting here and not knowing the inside yeah. story, you can't just assume that because of the next two years, that is going to be key. And the debates on the floor now... Yeah mostly will be centered around issues around the economy. Okay. So you want somebody with gravitas in there, in that particular aspect of things, who can for, put, put up a, a strong mm. uh, case for the NDC side, mm. and maybe they think he's a, he's a, he's a man to do it. Okay. You talk about the firebrand and the radicalism. Yeah. Of course, I think the two of them don't have the same radicalism of Muntaka Mubarak, mm. because we saw that when the vote came down, uh, in a push comes to show, he was ready to defend Definitely. the baller with his life. Definitely. I mean, somebody took the baller and he chased him. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly don't see Atu forcing in that mold. Mm. Um, I, the, the whips, Agboja can do that. Okay. I mean, I, I, I see Agboja in the, in the, in the Ahmed too. can do that. Ahmed, of course, well. can do that as well. I mean, so yeah. I mean, look, it's it's the NDC. This is their choice. Mm. The question is, first of all. How they are the minority members, the general 137, how they react to this. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, and, 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 how their own base, how their own grassroots folks mm -hmm. react to this. And, and, and Evans, before you go, let's look at the regional balance because I know in all of this, they consider regional balance. Who takes what position because there are uh, voters out there who you want to always reckon with you and follow your decisions. Now, you're taking Muntaka out of the, play, uh, the, 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 the space. You're taking Haruna out. Uh, that means that, and I, I do not see any representation from the North when you talk about the front line. Not you have uh, Ahmed Ibrahim, right? Ahmed Ibrahim is deputy whip. But if, if you come to the minority um, uh, position, you are now putting um, Ato Forsin, who is from the central, central region, region deputized by Western region, Amakofi Boa. You, you are now taking Volta region out. Of course, there's a you compensation. Have water, you have two Volta There's a region. compensation for the chief whip, Agboja, who is taking chief whip. So, so here's the so thing. So that's a compensation I for I actually Volta think region. if you look at the, if you look at the regional balance question, the party's chosen this very carefully because in the previous, in the previous manifestation of, of the leadership, there were two individuals from the Volta region. Yeah. You had James Kluti mm -hmm. and you have Comfort Do You Ganza. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, or is it Comfort seem to be in, yeah, I mean, I he, think she's it's in Adan. It's in Adan. Okay. Yep. So, so, he's, so we have just one person. And the same, really. It's been, and she's been maintained. Mm. Right? So again, they are, they are keeping faith with the Volta region with the Volta. In, in that. Yes. But you have the Central region, which is important because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's one of those battleground yeah. you know, regions uh, and, and the swing region as well. Mm. So I see why that is important, right? Because mm. you have a tough horse coming from there. Mm. But then you have the Western region, which is, which is another mm. um, swing region. Ahmed, uh, in Ahmed the play. is actually not from the Northern region. He is, in terms of the constituency that he yes. will store. Yes, and you, you, you want to talk about the northern region that has become not solely for the NDC now because the NPP is also making a lot of inroads in the northern region. Is this a good decision? No, I mean, if you look at Ahmed, he may not be from the northern region, but mm. from the general concept of the geographic location called the north. Yeah. He, yep. He's he from there, from. right? Mm. And so you could, you could easily say, well, they're making that consideration mm. that he would, he would sort of um, appeal 
to generally from the people of northern extraction. Right. This is something that has just come up. And just uh, as Evans uh, talks about, um, uh, we'll get to hear the details as uh, the days go by. It's a conversation that has started. We'll have more in our subsequent bulletins. Let's take a break on Joy News today. We'll bring you business.